just so we can cover more grants, not every day we have you on the show, so I'd like us to maximize this. I, I noticed something very interesting in that document, student loans, and I mean, that is really ambitious, especially for people who have stayed outside of the country, they know how it is. Yes, it's controversial in some areas, the U.S. trying to get that burden off the neck of students and all of that, but at least for a nation like Nigeria, what we have seen in the education sector, some might think, but I mean, it's a good idea because we've seen it in the past during the military regime. But then a lot of people will remember this statement that the presidential candidate made in 2015. Take a listen. We will give you student loan. Our program, four years will be four years. You will not stand before four years to graduate in a university. By the time on your fourth year, you will be taking through that critical part. Senior Advocate, where are the student loans today? That was in 2015. I think the, the roadmap and the foundation is being laid. Let me tell you why. Because, you see, you also need to ramp up revenues first and make them available for people and for students to tap into that revenue base. And that way, we're talking about revenue now, how to ramp up those revenues. Don't forget that when we came in, in 2015, and this is a significant point I want to make, I want everybody to fact check me as I speak. In 2014, no less a person than Okonjo Iweala, who was then Minister of Finance, told everyone that we're headed to recession. So it's not we, we did not give that excuse. It was a PDP government that said, at the time they were living, that the country was on a downward slide towards recession. And that was in 2013 and 2014. Now what happened therefore was that we came in and met that recession and then the country slid into recession. But because of the deftness of the handling of the economy, we came out of the recession faster than even the IMF predicted. And also the second recession, we came out faster than it, you know, uh, we, we did, they predicted. Then we now met low oil production that dropped to 700 barrels, 700,000 barrels per day, at times 600,000 barrels per day, when we should have been on 2.3 million barrels per day. We met those problems on the ground. So there was a problem of revenue, but the dream remained alive. The dream to fulfill these promises are still alive today as we begin to ramp up our revenues and rescue the economy from where PDP left the economy. And that right. is where we are now. So you well, can Senior see Advocate, that a couple of you issues. Just, what's you just, the sound bite. Right. A the couple of issues. The sound you just played now shows the... Yes, go ahead. Uh, you can land quickly just because of time. You said it shows the... The sound bite you just showed now is a further promotion of our candidate because it shows his consistency of thought. All right, so let's break it down. About it Senior Advocate. In 2014, let's break your response down. And he's talking about it now, too. Right, so let's break your response down. Thoughts. You said that the former minister yes. of, um, uh, of finance uh, said in 2013 that yes. there was going to be a recession. Your candidate made that statement yes. in 2015 January. Being aware of those statements made that Nigeria was getting into recession, yet he made that promise uh, to thousands of young people, in fact, maybe millions who were listening at that time. So that's on the one hand. So if, he's, if he made that promise at that time, it's almost eight years now, no student's loan. What is the assurance, really, that the one he's making now, that in seven years to come, there will be a reality. And you said that your government meant 700,000 barrels of crude at that time. Well, that is not true, at least according to the OPEC uh, figures. It was, this, this government was doing, as at May 2015, was doing between 1.6 million and 1.9 million barrels per day. By the end of 2015, production dropped. Go and fact check me. 20, end of 2015, early 20, there was disruption in production in the Niger Delta region. So everybody can fact check me. It dropped. You said it dropped to 700,000. And I'm giving you the figures uh, of what yes, your government meant when some you came instance. in. Uh, 1.6 million, 1.7 million. In fact, uh, the price of crude at that time, when your candidate said he was at the lowest, was about 60-something dollars. Not at the lowest. The lowest has been $25 in the 20 years that we've seen. So, well, well, you, I, I'm telling you to so fact check me that when we came in... I just in, did. That when you came in, it wasn't $700,000. But you were saying May. You are mentioning yes. May twenty, And I gave you June as well. June was 1.7 million. And I'm telling million. you that... That's when you came that in. If you're not taking May, the, that was, that I'm was giving you June. Over. Yes, so June is 1.7 million barrels per day. Yes. 
Yes. When do you when do you plan your budget? When was our first first budget planned? Our first this budget point was a 2016 is budget. pointedly at the, 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 the statement you made that you made seven hundred thousand dollars per barrel. Uh, oh, sorry, no, seven hundred thousand barrels over, per day. It dropped. No, no, don't misquote me. When I didn't we took over, you. it dropped to seven hundred thousand because because of disruption of production. And I want everybody to fact check you and I. I just it's did. I just gave you the figures when you came in, but in but order not to delay me, I'm telling you. I'm telling you that the budget. Look, listen. The budget, the first budget we planned was a 2016 budget, and that 2016 budget was based on 700 dollars uh, uh, production, and oil price based on 30 something dollars per barrel. That was the first budget we planned. So that was that 2015 was not our budget. Okay, so you're, you're, you're essentially shifting it from it when budget. you came into government to when you planned the budget, because your statement was we met seven hundred thousand. Well, I'm not shifting. You are, you are the one shifting government. it because no, those were your words actually. No, earlier you are on the you are the one shifting it. You are you are the one shifting it. You are the one shifting it because essentially our budget when we came in is the when we planned our budget. Our budget was based on seven hundred thousand dollars barrels per day and. Production and oil prices had dropped to about thirty something dollars per barrel. Go and check. Well, uh, based on the statements you made, I at least gave you the facts on ground. But the point also is that he made that promise then that you would have student loans, and he was he was specific. I mean, yes. and you listened to him. So if it didn't happen when he promised then in 2015, this is 2022. It looks like it won't even happen anyway. How are we sure that we can hold on to his words this time around? Because we're not talking about a situation where we had laid the foundation to the point where we are going to now have more revenues. And the pathway to have those revenues have been clearly laid. You cannot, you cannot meet those demands or those expectations without revenues. And I just told you that the vagaries of local disruption of production and international headwinds that we had to face disrupted revenues. So it's a matter of fact, I'm stating. Mm. It's All right, a so, of fact. I mean, just, just to be fair, uh, senior advocate, will he be apologizing then to Nigerians for the promise he made that has not come to fruition? No, do you have to apologize to perhaps a uh, force major? When you have a force major, you don't apologize. Those are force major. Well, I, I think a, a lot of people will say at least it's check, as a leader minion, who made a promise to job. people. I mean, it's only fair to say, well, we promised this, but we apologize we couldn't do it because of these reasons. Because, you, I mean, you, know you, call, you, you, know you respect the people. Uh, hold on. Let, let me first of all ask you, do you know what they call first major in contract law and law? I imagine that's a rhetorical question, senior advocate. No, it's not rhetorical. Let me explain what first major means. Even when two people um, are in a contract, senior advocate, I, I think we all do. Is the question happens. is just basically? Well, you're interrupting uh, me. No, because you're of time. Me. I think it's actually me. a general no, no, uh, term no. that a lot you of people run understand. Away. You cannot ask something around. No, I'm away. not running away. It's I'm, because I'm of time. My question was: people, Would he I, apologize to Nigerians? And you didn't answer the question. I said, when you have a first major. I said, when you have a first major, so you essentially he, he doesn't need to apologize. Contractual, you don't you don't even need to. You don't you are not. All right, no no me. problem. No I said when people went to no people senior and advocate. The contractual obligation. I'd like to ask you one more question. Happens, uh, nobody's liable to the other. Well, you're not right. listening to me. I, I, I apologize. You've to, answered the question. Me. I just need to you're ask you one more. No, you have not answered. Well, you've answered that question. I, we understand that yes. force major is an unforeseeable circumstance. I'm just trying to save time. Exactly. Uh, but on and a final note, people are in a contractual obligation, they don't. They are not liable when force major happens. All right. So on I'm a final you. note, I would just like you to respond to this. I, I know it's always quite interesting having a conversation with you, with your background in law. Uh, I mean, human rights advocate and all of that. But another statement uh, that he made at that time, and this was particularly about uh, former yeah. President Goodluck Jonathan's tenure, uh, was that Jonathan and his government are stealing 400. Hundred thousand barrels of crude oil every day in Nigeria. Now he made this statement in or your state during the campaigning, uh, you know, the usual campaign. And then he made that statement. Then right now, crude oil theft is still a major issue. At least we did nine hundred thousand barrels, according to the president, just when recently. So again, would we say that this government is then responsible if he said that Jonathan's government was responsible? Then was there even any proof? You have, just, you have just made my day. Because this recent, this recent discovery of the pipe 
that they laid to steal crude oil, they said it was established nine years ago. And we just, out of truth, you know, shrewdness and astuteness, we just discovered that pipeline now. So who was in government nine years ago when that pipeline was established? You answer it to the Nigerian people, Kayode. Tell the Nigerian people who was in government nine years ago. Well, you are the spokesperson of the Presidential Campaign Council, a senior advocate, and I imagine that, I mean, you'll be doing that. But we'd like to thank you so much uh, for your time on the program. Clearly, we'll have more time to take a look at this document. It's a very interesting one, and the coming days uh, will be quite instructive. Thank you so much, senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Festus Kiam, for your time to come back. on the I program tonight. I can't wait to tonight. come back to discuss this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well